before you get into the topic, uh, can you just introduce yourself, like your journey, uh, what you did, and how you come across this book, or uh, why you started to writing this book? Yes, Ranak. So yeah, so my name is Avinash Kunchurkar, and I have just recently become an author of the book A Salesperson's Honeymoon. I think before I talk about the book, I'll just brief uh, who am I. I am basically an industrial uh, production engineer by qualification. and i was working um, i have i have worked with uh, multinational uh, companies handling uh, large territories specifically into the sales uh, field so i quit uh, my job almost around 6 years back and i took the route of uh, becoming an entrepreneur so maybe you can you could say that i am a sales person by heart but i think by mind now today i am an entrepreneur so today i am i am a managing director of kunchurka group of companies which is largely into industrial distribution business and we cater to all of south india and i am married and blessed with two kids so i think that's that's a short summary of who i am yes as definitely <laughs> so like oh, you already wrote a book that how you come across this book like what is the incidents behind writing this book yeah that's a good question so it did happen i think when i was uh, working at a company called timken i was handling a large territory basically the south india territory i was handling for the sales and the workload was i mean too much um, i was flooded with 100 to 150 emails a day and then maybe around 40 to 50 calls i had to travel 14 to 15 days in a month to visit a lot of customers with this kind of digital work and hectic traveling my life was kind of a mess so uh, i think i was googling with my how to questions and how should i be more efficient with my time how can i manage my work almost i think with lot of efforts i was not going anywhere finally i think then uh, it was a time for a good news i was becoming a father so my wife was pregnant and she had to go to hometown so i think i had the leniency of time so i started going early to work i think i was in my office at 6:30 am morning and i stayed back till 8:30 pm because i was hell bent on uh, conquering my work and you know uh, getting uh, a grip over my work and exceeding with my sales but for some reason despite working seriously hard i was still a little bit far away from success i would i was just testing it but again i had to uh, work a lot i think tired struggling reading business books after book sales books after sales books finally i came across a book which kind of resonated with my then situation and an idea occurred which got connected when i was 17 years old okay so back then in 17 years old i was uh, i had received an uh, email which was basically from my crush which at the end I, i don't remember what the whole message was but at the end it ended with a bang saying i love you <laughs> so i was like thrilled i was like on top of the moon being a 17 year old i think getting an email from your crush is something i think every person likes about but later i realized that it was basically a prank uh, which was set up by my friends to fool me around but i think that gave me a good lesson that basically uh, that maybe ignited a spark in me saying that how this was done and i never wanted to get fooled again at least with respect to the, to the digital work so that's how i started going into the computers and i fell in love with computers but it also kind of made me a hacker into the computer world so i learned a lot about computers the programming the back ends and all and this email what i received was basically called as an email spoofing i think um, many people even today receive the email setting this is email from bill gates of microsoft and so on so we'll give you a job you just have to transfer me this money or maybe an email from a bank whichever bank you are dealing saying that your password is at risk your account is hacked your account is you have to change the password to secure it so i think these are all kinds of uh, hacking skills or you called as email spoofing where they take out your details 
and take your credentials and think you'll lose your money and you'll lose your account details. So I got into this world, but that gave me an attitude. The attitude was irrespective of the challenges. Basically, if you have, if you are a hacker, so irrespective, you will face obstacles in the computer world. So irrespective of the challenges, you tend to find a way out to get your solution done. So that kind of attitude was uh, with me when I was in a college days, but I think I never took it out uh, when I was working as a sales representative in a, in a uh, multinational company. So when this work hectic of working 12 to 14 hours a day was there, that book uh, got related to this 17 year incident and an idea occurred that I thought, you know, I should be applying this hacking attitude to my work and see how I can make myself more efficient. So when I kept working on that idea over days, over days, over days, I could see that there was a pattern, a repeated pattern my work was there, whether it was my emails, whether it was my calls, whether it was my customers, whether it was my sales, everything followed that similar pattern. So I was like stunned. I was like shocked. I was like, what is happening? Why, why is my every data looking the same despite knowing that these data are independent of each other? Then finally, I kind of uh, thought that maybe I'm really onto something big. So that's how I spent some more few days, got to know it, it, and finally I had an epiphany, which told me that yes, I can possibly do fix my work, get out of that 12 to 14 hour work day, irrespective of how hectic my work is, I can get this done within six hours or five hours. And when I established a process, when I created a recipe out of my epiphany, my whole work, what earlier I was to doing in 12 to 14 hours, I was now doing it in four, four and a half to five hours. So that uh, that lesson I took out, and once I had discovered this epiphany, I no longer wanted to be, you know, restricted with my job because I knew that I was onto something big. So I think pretty much after one year of this discovery, I quit my job, became an entrepreneur, took this new epiphany, whatever I had learned in my previous job started applying in my business and made my business successful so in the so i have i have been an entrepreneur for almost 5 years now and in 5 years so i have grown my business by almost 552% all while working around 5 to 6 years a day okay so that's it ronik i think it was a long introduction but I, but i think that was required because i think a lot of things were connected Yes, exactly. Because like working five to six hours a day, like it's a, a dream for the ninety-nine uh, percent of the people. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. Yeah. So it was for me because I was so wanting to get out of that fourteen-hour work day. Uh, trust me, I think this was kind of a blessing in disguise for me. Yes, but uh, the <laughs> question remains like. Uh, when you come across this, mm. like uh, the we will get into the salespoon curve in the later part. But uh, how you come across sure, it? Like sure, already sure. you mentioned, uh, mentioned about it. But when you, you are, when you are into completely new business, then how you will apply it? Because see, if the organization is already set, then uh, we can say that we have the large amount of data, then we can apply it easily. But yeah, as you yeah. said, yeah. So as you're starting a new venture or something new, mm. how will mm. you will apply that? Okay, I think that's a very good question because a lot of entrepreneurs who are who want to be become an entrepreneur, I think it's, it's the sales moon curve is going to be an key phenomena for them once they establish a business. But when I think whenever a person starts a new business, I think you will 100% agree with me. It's all about hustling and grinding. You have to hustle, you have to grind, you have to you have to first be in a place which has a market potential to grow. You have to have that idea whenever I think many a times a person wants to be in a business because he wants to follow his passion. Do you agree with me, Ronak? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so when, when a person wants to follow his passion, I think he always has to see or he always has to have an eye with a business acumen. Kind of seeing, okay, I think a passion is always close to heart. I think that's what uh, makes us to drive it. That's why we are ready to you know, face any kind of resistance 
uh, whatever we appear in the field just because we want to follow a passion we are ready to work not only 14 hours we are work, ready to work 20 hours a day which is completely okay with us but we want to follow a passion i think that's how and a person becomes an entrepreneur because he is so passionate whatever he whatever is driving him but having said that he also has to slightly measure whether what is the potential or the market potential of his passion what are the kind of customers he is looking for so he has to kind of create a customer avatar he has to have a market assessment if he follows his passion how much can he basically scale his business what's the end goal where does he want to eventually reach so if he sees that whatever his is passion is there he has to hustle and grind he has to work it he has to face rejections he has to you know take the shit uh, whatever is coming along the way and take those learnings and find a path to it find a way find some means to channel his effort repeatedly if he keeps doing that he will find some alternate ways and he will see there are so many things which does not work and there are a few things which it keep working so he has to keep doing those things which work which work which work uh, start following people who are into his similar a niche similar zones understand what uh, what was those success parameters which helped him scale in that particular field take those learnings and come to one level of conclusion once he is there once he is there i think that is when sales moon comes uh, curve comes in picture because sales moon curve is basically for experienced people for people who have found one zone who have found a little bit of what you say Uh, water in a desert where they were feeling okay following the passion was like uh, uh, walking in a desert but finally they were able to figure out some water sales moon curve is like figuring out how to make that water into a river or into an ocean okay right exactly so uh, as you said uh, about that uh, uh, the newbie or the new entrepreneurs obviously first they have to at least so sales moon we can say that sales moon curve it's initially if they want to apply uh, it's more like if you have already data something right correct correct absolutely correct so it's sales moon curve is basically like you have figured out your passion you have figured out that you want to dedicate your whole life following your passion and you have kind of figured out that it has a market potential now what it does is sales moon curve what it does is it channelizes your efforts instead of now working since an entrepreneur wants to hustle hard so instead of now working so many hours so it is basically going to tell him ki look this is the areas where you have to focus your efforts on this is the areas where you have to target your efforts on don't you know keep uh, focusing on every other customer or every other market opportunity just because you say that okay this is my passion field this is my fa- passion field just see whatever the efforts you are putting in what is the kind of returns are getting for the amount of effort you're putting in so once you figure it out i think sales moon curve is going to be a wonderful recipe for your business yes yeah, exactly but before i come like like obviously i read the book and i know how all these things work but before i yeah. come across your terminology uh, there is another sure. concept concept that is like 80 20 rule hope you know that mm-hmm. so i correct correct absolutely this both are connected uh, in the short form what you say about it not short form it is purely 100% connected in the long form so in fact as i told you about my epiphany journey during my job so when i got this epiphany i was like hell bent why is this my data uh, you know uh, irrespective of the data what i was measuring i was getting a similar trend and when i started looking it in numerical factors so that's where i arrived that it it was going and connected to the 80 20 formula because i think being in a sales we always have heard that phrase 80% of your sales come from comes from 20% oh, of your customers right? right right so i think but but what has happened is nobody goes beyond that formula everybody is like okay we know 80% of my sales is coming from 20% of my customers but nobody thinks beyond that if you ask anybody beyond that rule nobody knows what to do about it i think and even for mm-hmm. me when i when i initially discovered this epiphany i think i have read a lot many books or googled about 80 20 80 20 everything was arriving on a theoretical factor 
80 20% of the you know uh, emails oh, sorry 80% of your emails will not be of value only 20% will be effective so i think it was very very much theoretical uh, not really practical kind of very difficult to implement and it was like okay assume okay 80% of my work is of no use 20% is of use but nobody was able to you know convince themselves how should i actually focus on my 20% how should i actually exactly. measure which 20% is effective so right. that was the challenge that was the challenge so i think this this uh, approach what i have uh, basically given a recipe of sales moon curve and the four buckets to uh, you know four ways to bucket your customer which has uh, the the top customers the high potential and the poor share customers what i what i've uh, explained in detail in the book i think that gives you kind of a road map how exactly to take the theoretical part of 8020 rule and practically apply it in your business so maybe i think that was initially how how i thought i should be titling this book the unknown uh, 8020 uh, rule is what i wanted to basically title this book but i thought maybe people would be too bored to even understand oh 8020 when you know 8020 it's 80% to 20% we already know that so i thought right. i think people should be people should be actually getting and a lot of output out, out of this book and that is how i figured out a systematic approach to pen down this book yes exactly even i can uh, i would like to add something to it because the 8020 is sure, sure. obviously more like a, a general formula but what uh, yeah. what this book had something it's like the uh, the uh, the three types of graph i can say that like the item mm. uh, if you are mm. right the, that graph actually concludes a lot about 8020 rule i mean that's what i yeah. believe because obviously i also read yeah. a lot of business book because i am also in the um, sales marketing field or the digital marketing yeah. in okay. short yeah so yeah. Okay. i can mm. understand it very well so that was mm. a, like very very good point or the practical approach that you 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 come up came up with and that's really appreciated thank you thank you so much <laughs> thank you so much ramesh in fact okay so i think the one more so, reason why i think i did not answer you the reason why i wrote this book because i think you asked me this question but somehow i think in the story i did not really answer you why exactly i wrote this book yes yeah so what happened was as a okay being becoming an uh, business owner so i came across okay i am basically located located my office is located in a cluster of industries so a lot of times i have seen so many people who are passionate who are knowledgeable who know what who are, who are knowledgeable about the products they are manufacturing i have seen these businesses fail and then i have also interacted with so many sales people sales managers and sales leaders most everybody knows the agent and role but i think nobody was basically applying into their business or applying into their work and that's what maybe hit me hard saying that you know i have held this secret of my sales moon curve with me for long time i think it was almost 7 years i have kind of not shared it with people because i thought you know this is kind of my secret uh, arsenal my power because i know Uh, how to get my work done in the shortest amount of time i just know where exactly i have to put my efforts in to get the results so i was basically not sharing it with people so i think seeing these kind of business owners uh you know um, making their businesses fail they were shutting down their businesses they were unable to manage their cash flows they were unable to grow their business profitability and seeing the sales people who were like good sales people and i mean they had good sales skills but they were struggling to manage their work or grow sales seeing these people i thought no it i think it was time to uh, get my message out get it out of my mind and uh, pen it down somewhere so i thought since i am i am a, i am also an avid reader just like you i read a lot of business books i read a lot of self help books and i thought maybe the books is a good way for me to uh, reveal it to the whole public and that is how i decided to pen down in a form of a book okay so like actually it's a really uh, good thing that uh, you believe that you should share uh, you like actually you believe that you have to share your knowledge with everyone because that's a, a sign of a good human being right thank uh, you <laughs> yeah 
so like uh, next question comes obviously you started your entrepreneur journey uh, almost it's 5 to 7 years so what is your biggest ups and downs in your life ups and downs in my life with respect to business yeah because obviously starting a business is not a small thing because as per the indian statistics there are uh, around 62% of the business fails at the around uh, less than 6 months so obviously Correct, yeah. uh, starting a business yeah, it's a you, you, you even i have read those stats and i was like 90% of the businesses are closed down within 5 years of operation so i was like uh, okay <laughs> that that looks like a really bad thing to do i think what i have seen basically in a business i mean i even i'll take it with personal experience as well business owners are driven uh with a lot of things going around in their mind and in their uh, what you say dreaming with their eyes open what i think again it goes back to the passion what we have discussed again so they are passionate but what they do not see it is they do not see their business in numbers they do not see their business in profitability they do not see their business in scalability so they don't see these challenges i think basically if these stats are correct what uh, the reports say that people close down their business in 6 months or 10 months or 11 months or maybe 5 years 90% are 90% of the business are not closed down i think it basically comes down to understanding business with a financial eye if that acumen if every entrepreneur who is passionate or who is driven by their passion has a financial acumen has a little bit of knowledge about the finance have, before he starts if he reads a little bit on how to run his business financially i think he is going to be much more successful rather than just following his heart yes actually that's true even uh, even i do believe that because uh, finance is the because it's a, obviously it's a number game also because unless you cannot like uh, match all the numbers you cannot really go further of your limits true 100% i do okay I, i think that is why um, i thought that every entrepreneur should be a 21 word entrepreneur i think that is what one word one phrase i coined out saying that no matter person whoever is entering the field of entrepreneurship he should be a 21 word entrepreneur right exactly so obviously uh, the next question comes about the uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we will talk about the book also but the uh, questions that i received from the people uh, about the mm-hmm. entrepreneurial journey that how's your how you train your mind or how you worked with your emotions because see obviously you are working in the six almost five to seven years in the business and there there comes a point where you go like very low so how that mm-hmm. time you manage your emotions fine say for me i think i'll be very honest with you ups and downs i think is a part of business and you have to actually hit the low points of your life to actually go back and bounce because those low, uh, low points are basically will make you feel that you know something is missing something is wrong something is not going as per the charts of course there are times things are absolutely not in your control Uh, and even you know that somewhere that th- this is something which you cannot control but that takes a hit on your emotions you go low your self esteem i think goes very low below, below the levels and you kind of drain out uh, you do not have a motivation why exactly should i go to office uh, what is not something is not driving me and the passion what you followed to open up your entrepreneurship journey immediately kind of uh, goes away so at that time i have always found books to be my companion i have always i think the one of my favorite books when i go low on my self help i mean self esteem is the obstacle is a way by ran holiday so i think that is that one book is very wonderful book which energizes me to come back i think any time whenever you go low on your self esteem you have to remember that it is temporary you have to remember that it is not your failure it is kind of testing you have to remember that these are your life lessons this is something which you have not experienced how to bounce back and this is something the life is making you learn or 
teach by giving you this kind of experience in your life so when you see it from an outsider perspective when you see uh when you don't blame yourself when you see yourself from a third party's perspective i think you are going to get some different ideas some unique ways to handle your situations and again bounce back right so we can conclude in that like if you want to see the rainbow then you have to face the rain <laughs> Ah, hundred percent. That's a good. Uh, that's a good uh, way to put it. Absolutely. And if you don't experience the rain, you will never know, right? You have to fall before you know what the pain is. If you don't fall, you will never know what the pain is. And when you when you know the pain, so you will you will automatically make make provisions in your life how I should not fall. Yes, yes, exactly. Because the learning from mistake is an important thing in life. for me 100% i believe in learning from mistakes so much that every employee in my organization is purposefully pushed to the customer to commit mistakes we do not train them on certain aspects we are, we give them good training but there are certain aspects where we purposefully leave it untrained we push them to the customer we make them commit mistakes and because they learn so much quicker so much faster from their mistakes that they are ready to learn the all other things which they feel they might commit mistakes and that learning curve shoots up so big that we have kind of created a culture in our organization where we say that no no any person who joins us who is unaware about the field we will make him commit mistakes right so uh, as you said that you read a lot of books so can you suggest our audience to three four books that they should definitely read in their life okay so i think since you um, tell about the self esteem one of the recent books i read was about alex bunyan uh, the book title is the third door i think one of the wonderful books because i think it's uh, basically a journey of his and he has written the story so well that probably if you start reading it the first or second chapter you will by far uh, finish up the book so i think that's one very good book i have read if you want if you are talking about the hardships of entrepreneurship or the hardship of life and uh, coming out or finding that third door in your life where you want to taste success i think that's a wonderful book to read that's one suggestion the second suggestion is about habits and um, the influence so for habits i would suggest atomic habits by james clear a very good book to uh, read and then and then okay then there are attempts i think as you told about the self esteem being low and we do not feel like getting up from our bed to go to work so at that time i think the five second rule by mel robbins is another good book which which really really real works i think even there was a times there were some times in my life where i was i wanted to wake up early do a lot of things and for some reason my inner negative voice would say oh come on i mean i think you are already doing good you are already profitable you are already uh, earning good amount of money why do you want to put that so that negative voice would always creep in and pull me down that five second rule book by mel robbins has really um help me to cut down that negative voice just by following a very simple rule that is counting backwards from 5 4 3 2 1 yeah, and just taking exactly. action right right yes like it same work on the psychology like we used to do in the race course like when you say 3 2 1 yeah, go yeah. that's the same cycle yeah. applies here yeah i think that was that was a very eye opening book because i thought it was such a simple rule but when i actually tried it it work like miracle so that that one book i would definitely suggest and yeah. then i think if you are so, basically starting in your life if you are just starting up to face the journey i think the you can win by shetkara is a good book uh, a generic self help book which covers a lot of aspects right from motivation from self esteem from what's holding you back from setting goals so i think it's a good overall approach to read Yes. but then there is a lot so, of books i think if you keep asking me specific questions i'll keep giving you <laughs> the titles of the books i think there are a lot of wonderful i want to book i think uh, i love books i think you can anytime ask me any question specific to a book i think i can give an answer for that yeah that's why i framed the question on the top 3 books <laughs> <laughs>
yes like coming to our the next question obviously uh, the whoever is going to the read the book is the, the sales phone curve is going to helpful for them but have you tried yeah. applying sales curve in your life like rather than the business aspect have you tried applying in your day to day life or something related to your life or have you tried it or is it possible to apply because see possible. our day to day life See, day to day life our consumes to twenty four hours. So, can we say that there are there are some hours where we work very hard, very high mm-hmm. on high work, oh, sorry, on high high low, and there are the times where just like we just do time pass. So, I think it is applicable. What have you tried it? What your take on it? Okay, I think I was seeing sales moon curve from my perspective earlier, but when I was writing this book, I basically wanted to get a perspective of other business people. how they would apply it or what are their uh, kind of objectives in life and when i kept meeting i think i have met close to 25 to 30 uh, business leaders and uh, sales leaders because i just want to understand their perspective before penning down this book i think their their ideas has also helped me understand a lot about how to practically apply but one thing i have observed that people have different uh, what do you say different objectives in life for example for me uh, since i have since i had told you earlier when i was working i was working 14 hours so i was not able to spend uh, quality time with my family so for me family came first for me family comes first for me yes i have to grow my business i have to uh, grow my sales i have to be more profitable everything is there but it cannot be uh, you know by compromising my, my time with my family so for me my family time comes first so that is the priority for me so if you see the sales moon curve sales moon curve is nothing but focusing on the top most priority then going with the next priority then going with the next priority so i think maybe you need to understand what priorities are there in your life and when i approached this uh, other business people for some the their priority was you know focusing their time on the business they wanted to spend more time more of their time into the business rather than putting more time in the family so they had their different uh, uh, different things were driving them so i think understanding what your priorities are where exactly you want to focus your time where do you think that you are not able to uh, invest a lot of time into your areas which you actually want to invest so i think you can basically put it down measure your time and apply the sales moon curve approach to it and figure out a way to it okay so obviously uh, priority changes for everyone and obviously different for each and every person so i yes. think it is apply so as you say it is applicable for everyone in every aspects of life absolutely every aspect of life but i think just that your priority should be driving you and it should not be other around where you know based on your work or based on your something else you you are going to compromise on your personal priorities and uh, doing something else which you actually don't want to do so by doing it this repeatedly eventually you are going to come in a phase where your self esteem is going to go low where you are going to hate your work you are going to hate everything in your life and might i'm not sure but you might also get into the depressing state of life where you kind of hate everything in life so i think before you go into that stage i would always want you to focus on your priorities in life first before you apply it in your work or in your business and then based on those priorities of life you your importance to your work and your business okay. so in short uh, this answer can be summarized like the first step to find your passion second step to find your priorities and third apply the sales moon curve right yes 100% 100% so uh, as uh, we are running out of the time uh, i don't want to make okay. it too long but <laughs> sure. uh, the second uh, the second last curve comes like you already said you know uh, you knew these secrets from the last 5 to 6 years do you know any other yeah. secrets in business that you want to come up with or you are thinking to write on it yes i think uh, the, i think one more um, issue i think it, this is basically uh, more related to a b2b businesses so what I'll, i think i'll just sum up i'm not sure whether it will be uh, usable to all your audience but anyways i'll just put it across what happens in a b2b businesses when you are approaching this multinational organizations where you want to sell your products to them they have 
a lot many suppliers with them for every product they may be having somewhere around five to ten suppliers for each product and what right. they do is they kind of segregate uh, those uh, suppliers based on the brand so at any point of time they will have uh, three suppliers for one product meaning minimum so no matter whatever you try no matter how good your product is no matter the features the advantages and the benefits of your product are supreme to everyone you will always be clasped into that one of three supplier box but and when you are actually clasped in that box so it all boils down to think that within these three suppliers whoever is the most competitive in prices he wins the business and when you come into this situation it really becomes difficult to being giving the best product in the market at a compromised price at times it might not be possible because you might not be profitable given that kind of having having that kind of a product for example let's say selling an apple phone into a market where even the samsung is approved and even uh, one plus uh, six or one plus seven is also approved so if that kind of situation there is in a corporate world and they are measuring only on the commercial aspects the apple phone is always going to lose right so exactly. in those situations so in in this kind of situation how can you promote an apple product how can you make that customer believe that although this is one of the three suppliers are there how he should and why he should buy only that apple phone so if if we, and it, i think there is some principles i have framed a rough out sketch of how should i approach i am already approaching i mean i am i am already i'm already, sorry i am already applying it my business but i have not basically penned it down in a form of text where i can convey to people that this is the way you should be approaching it so i think that's the new writing that's something which i'm working on that's something i wanted to share to the world again i don't want people to be uh, screwing their bottom line screwing their profits just to get that business so I'm, that is something which i'm working on i think i should be able to do it by mid of uh, year 2020 i'm not sure whether i'll write it in a book or not but i think definitely i'm going to write something on it on my website or on my blog or maybe come up with a youtube video Yeah, you can even you can try to the Amazon Kindle also because that can also be available. Yeah, yeah. I think that and that can that, also be done. Yeah, if it is a very short book, like more than fifty, sixty pages, then you can tr- go for that. No, but I think my my biggest concern comes is whenever I'm reading a business book, there are so many books I have come across where the ideas are good, but they have made the book little. I mean, very, very, very boring. so books become so boring that at times it it is a challenge to the reader to finish the book so i don't want the book so i don't want the book to mean so be, um, the book i'm sure the ideas will be good but the 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 way the books are written are so boring that at times you lose the inspiration to I mean complete the book so i don't want to make any a book or a content to be uh to be like a you know a board book um not so well written book so i i trying to find a way out so that people enjoy make that people read a lot maybe give those open loops and the close loops in the book where makes it people read or read the end of the book i think if i am able to figure it out with the with the whatever the thing i am talking about the one of three supplier box if i am able to figure it out in that way i think the second book might also come in i am not sure Yes, exactly. I can relate to this because I, I I get a lot of books to read, and I can completely relate to this because I have seen boring <laughs> books also and interesting books also. So even uh, this book, a, I think even the even this book, the salesperson's honeymoon. You know, before I think I had written one chapter of this book maybe one and a half year ago, and when I read that book chapter, just that first chapter, I was so bored to death that I, for some reason, I did not want to write. but then i came across an hollywood uh, script writer called michael hogg and that's how i came across him on the internet i paid him somewhere around i think uh, 197 or 297 dollars i don't remember but that someone i paid i got to know from him how he uses the, the scripts in the movie hollywood which makes the people you know sit on the edge of the seat and watch what happens till then so i took those formulas and kind of 
took the uh, studies from him and then i implemented that concept in the book making sure that at least the person reads uh, the book till the first part i think the, the book is basically divided into two parts the first part basically goes in a story of two people where one person is struggling in his life to achieve decent amount of success despite working hard and then there is another person called the preeminent sales person who enjoys success even while working remarkably less so i think that first part is basically an inspiration which i have story writing inspiration is basically from michael hoke's uh, uh, teaching so that i have to take and i have made sure that i make a business book not a boring book so i think my approach was that i'm not sure whether it was successful i think the only reader should be tell me whether the book was boring or not but i think that that was my idea going or writing a book for actually uh, obviously it, 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 i i finished it within one day or so if i want to make it into time like less than 3 hours and i started okay. applying those in the next 3 hours oh, okay <laughs> nice great great <laughs> great i have and i have suggested your book to the lot of my uh, friends who are into entrepreneurship journey or their parents are in the business journey i have even uh, given to books to the one of like two three friends to the like parents of oh. two three friends who are into the business okay. journey you will get their feedback soon also oh thank you thank you so much ramna thank you yeah so uh, coming towards the last question uh, like okay. after you know, so much of journey uh, sharing your knowledge and everything what is your motto in life like what is your end goal or what you want to see after uh, what is your end goal hmm that's a tricky question honestly because <laughs> because i always see my life 5 years ahead i always think what i want to do in the next 5 years i have never um, kind of written the end goal because i because i want to experience life i want to experience the newness the life comes in Uh, the irregularities of the life is something i enjoy the surprises of the life is something i want to have so whenever i do my uh, future setting i always see 5 years down the line so in the 5 years down the line i see opening up i have currently around four uh, businesses if i am talking on the business aspects i have four businesses two are into industrial distributions one one of them is in e-commerce and one of them is an online business so these are the four businesses so i think in future five years down the line i want to have around 15 businesses i have some ideas of different businesses i want to have a lot of time for my kids at the end because i want to see them playing cricket or somebody dancing or whatever they are passionate about doing so i want to have, have that time so basically whatever i am trying to do i i want to make sure that at the end despite doing all those things i have to have time for the priorities of my life first so that's that's the goal here yeah exactly so actually that's so sweet of you to take uh, so much time from your daily schedule and making to this podcast i hope everyone will okay. enjoy it we'll put the link of the book in the description if you exactly. if you don't know what is the sales moon curve is go buy that book and definitely check out the sales moon curve because you are going to get a a uh, completely new life i can say that after reading that book and definitely that will change your business also and your personal life also thank you thank you so much ranak i think it's been a pleasure to be in, uh, in touch with you to interact with you i think uh, sharing getting a review from you matters a lot and this podcast i am sure uh, people will reach out to your podcast people will hear out because you are connecting with so many authors who have so many brilliant ideas with them who have their own voice their own thinking their own uniqueness and you are bringing those uniqueness those ideas and those experience into your podcast and making it a good platform for people to hear out uh, so many things i think that's a wonderful and a commendable achievement from you to bring it out in a podcast and i think i really appreciate you putting your so much of efforts in making sure that your audience get so much of freshness and ideas from so many different people So I think I I I I commend for your work. I commend you for the efforts you are putting in, and I commend uh, you to I commend you to you that you are following your passion uh, of reviewing and doing the things and uh, things you love and doing your digital marketing stuff. 
Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Avinash.